very good morning to all it is our great pleasure to welcome you all to the knowledge 4.0 webinar series which is one of the unique and, uh, and distinct initiative of uh, challenge for technology under the guidance of our honorable chairman cp sriram who is one of the well known successful first generation entrepreneur the managing director of mk group of companies under knowledge 4.0 we have been conducting webinar series in different scenario such as research webinar series technical webinar series career guidance webinar series innovative talk webinar series and alumni webinar series this webinar series are purely conducted in order to enhance the knowledge of faculty members researchers and students community so we the uh, the lockdown period is only for the nation and worldwide but there is no lockdown for learning by keeping this as motto challenge of technology is taking a tremendous effort to enhance the knowledge of uh, different communities as a social respons responsibility today we have uh, dr uh, mr parri kumar with us who is going to uh, who is one of the uh, expert in data analytics so he is with us it is my great pleasure to welcome him for the wonderful occasion and it is my pleasure to welcome all the participants once again for this wonderful forum i am very happy uh, to introduce today expert uh, parni kumar so he is the uh, director of innotetics ing usa so he is a very good uh, implementer of industrial revolution 4.0 he is the alumnus of isb and iit and he is having more than 15 years of professional and consulting experience and 8 years of extensive training experience and he has trained so far 4000 professional across the globe and he is engaged with 1000 plus uh, consulting uh, 100 plus consulting companies and he is uh, is the having a very good excellent communication skill and has the capability to explain toughest concepts in a very lucid way uh, he has successfully delivered 40 plus big data and analytic engagements and as i said he has trained over 4000 professionals across the globe and uh, he is having very good experience in different domains a project management pro professional it is called as pmp then pmi acp agile certificate practitioner and agile project, project management he is the uh green belt holder of lean six sigma and black belt holder also and he is the master black holder in the six sigma and he is the develop satisfy associate and uh, and the lot of things if we if you are going and saying so a lot of thing can be said about him he is one of the uh, very good uh, person and trainer in data data analytics and he is the very good data scientist and uh, he is doing research in uh, analytics and deep learning and iot which is which are going to rule the world uh, in the forthcoming uh, days and he is the uh, well known chief data scientist and he is working with uh, ethereum technologies uh, mentally met and brown dog by analytics and six bis and he is the visiting faculty of works and business school and it is our great pleasure to have a a uh, nice and successful and excellent personality parni kumar with us and let me welcome parni kumar sir to uh, share the session please sir you can have go ahead thank you thank you so much for introducing me uh, let me quickly ask a question on whether you all are able to hear me or not let me ask yeah, yes sir we are able to hear you sir okay you are clear you can go ahead I'm doing a quick poll in the interest of uh, everyone else. Yep. Can you all please answer this? It's kind of my way of uh, ensuring that there is some kind of interactivity. Yes, sir. Great, One. great, sir. Great. One. All right. So, in the first place, thank you all so much for giving me this opportunity to present myself before uh, yourself and thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences on how we implement data science or artificial intelligence 
at various workplaces. This is me. I am an Industrial Revolution 4.0 implementer and a chief data scientist. I also happen to be a technology advisor on multiple firms. As doctor has introduced me, I happen to be an alumnus of ISB and IIT with 15 plus years of experience. I currently work as a director for Innovis, an analytics consulting firm. I happen to also work as an advisory committee member on Sixpus, which is a Malaysian company in the space of financial services insurance. I happen to work as a chief data scientist <clears throat> on Brontobite Analytics, which is a healthcare startup, on Athena Technologies, which is a USA-based firm. And I also happen to be director of 360 Digital MG. So, I am a full-time director on 360 Digital MG and Inno Datatics. And in all these other companies, I work as an interlocutor. Interlocutor means those people who work on board of various other companies. And um, yep, I've, I'm an alumnus of ISB and IIT Hyderabad. And these are the bunch of international certificates which I have, ranging from DSDM Mutton from UK, Lean Six Sigma Green Black and Master Black Build, PMP, RMP, and ACP, and then the Anyone wants to a LinkedIn profile is a at least at the time of you know digital transformation. So let me post this in the chat window and Whoever wants to connect with me on LinkedIn, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. While this is one thing, another thing is, I also request you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, the benefit here is that there are a lot of videos on base statistics, which I have personally recorded. I also recorded certain videos on crisp DM which is project management methodology on how you need to implement your data science or artificial intelligence or any data mining projects. I'm also going to ping you this. Please do not forget to subscribe. There we go. Yeah. All right. Having said this, let me move on and then explain you, you all more about what is what are the kind of projects we implement. Whatever projects we do, of course, we also need to promote those. So I keep posting those things on social media and I'll explain more using this. So there is a specific, okay, let me play this video. This is a product that we have built, which will automatically track your attendance. Why is it important? Because at the, at the time of COVID-19, Hey, sorry about that. Uh, so let me replay this and help you quickly understand that at the time of COVID-19, if you start using biometric system to track your attendance, then there is a high possibility that you will end up spreading COVID-19 because you touch this device. So is the case with RFID also because you get close to the device to swipe your attendance. So what we have done is we have enabled facial recognition system using artificial intelligence and deep learning, which would automatically track your attendance. It will recognize on whether you are a visitor or a security person. Alongside that, we have also placed thermal sensor, which will track your body temperature. If someone is tracked and temperature is greater than 100 degrees Celsius, uh, degree Fahrenheit, sorry, 
then that person will not be allowed to enter the office premises. And this information is also shared with your HR personnel, reporting managers, etc. And we also have a provision to track behaviors of employees. Right? Alongside that, say there is a fire accident. We can actually track on which floor, which room, those employees who are still stuck were last seen. If they were last seen in the fourth floor, in the three rooms, then your fire evacuation team can directly go to these rooms and then try to evacuate the employees. Right? This is one such project that we have built. And we have also tied up with Panasonic. We are exclusive edtech partner with Panasonic. And uh, we are bringing in a lot of use cases, industry relevant use cases into the training curriculum that we have. How does it work? I'll explain about that later. And uh, we have also tie up with uh, a lot of international universities, including IBM also. We have built a forecasting model to forecast the number of COVID-19 cases. And then Indian government has come up with a, with a strict norm saying that we are not supposed to predict anything or forecast anything pertaining to COVID-19. But this was done prior to that. We have built this in collaboration with Apollo Hospitals, wherein we forecasted the number of COVID-19 cases in India. Okay. And we have achieved an accuracy of 98%. If you want to watch this video and get better insight, you can always play this video. It's there on my list. We also built a project for wherein instead of someone sitting before this video and counting the number of, of and the moment a vehicle passes through that, automatically that vehicle is tracked and counted automatically it is tracked and counted and this information can be shared with the roads and buildings ministry who might want to put a traffic signal to regulate the traffic or they might want to widen the route and all this data gets captured in the back-end database like this so you need not have humans sitting there and counting these things we also built an artificial intelligence driven chatbot for Paradise. And I'm sure a lot of you all are aware of Paradise. And if you be to Hyderabad, do not forget to eat Hyderabad Yeah. So you can sit on the table, scan the QR code, open the chatbot, and then you can actually place an order of the food. And food will be delivered on the table. You need not wait for someone to come and make an order. So you save a lot of time, basically. And we have also built a behavioral analytics system on our learning management system. We have this. And this is very interesting from students' perspective. When we record the videos and share it with our participants, they watch the videos. And while watching the videos, they might fall asleep also. Who knows, right? If we can track that information on whether the person who's watching the videos happy or sleepy or neutral alongside the agenda, etc., it makes a lot of sense. Analytics. We've also built another project, uh, which is a robot. We call this robot Winnie. Winnie. Okay, so Winnie actually can track you, can track your attendance, it will greet you, and many things. Just watch this video, you'll understand better.
these are a few projects that are and many more. Now we will do a slight deep dive and try to understand more about the Yeah, could be network issue, actually. <clears throat> so let me ask this question. On. Did you feel excited about the projects which we have done? Yes or no? Can you please respond to this? Of course, this is kind of a biased uh, question that is being asked, but yeah, let's see. Of course, I'm sensing that majority of y'all will say yes. A few of y'all are saying, no, we are not excited. Right? That's fine. These are all the projects, which includes Industrial Revolution 4.0. I will speak more about these by, you know, helping you understand on what are the various industries and sectors in which we actually use industry 4.0 and how marketing analytics comes in extremely handy. But even before that, let me explain you that, you know, we implement the, these kind of solutions across the various industries. It is not necessary that you implement industry 4.0 only in a specific industry. We can implement industry 4.0 across all the industries, ranging from automotive to aviation to, you know, life sciences, healthcare, manufacturing, financial services, insurance, you name it. We would have implemented industry 4.0 across these industries. Hey, how is that even possible? Let me explain a few. Uh, re and I'll, I'll get started by explaining about use cases pertaining to automotive. If you just say PMI National Conference 2017, way back in 2017, we have done one of its kind project and we won the first place across India and the likes of Vishwanathan Anand, Mohandas Pai, etc. were there. And we presented our paper in a rapidly changing world where we won the first place. That's me, Barani Kumar Deepu. And what is this project all about? In order to help you understand that, I will just say PMI, Survival Analytics. And the very first link that you see is pertaining to that. While if you read this, you'll understand about the project management methodology that we followed. How did we go about dealing with this? Yeah, I'm going to help you understand on what did we exactly do. <clears throat> If a vehicle breaks down in a specific journey, say you're transporting the goods from one point to another, say you're transporting the goods from Hyderabad to Chennai, and if this truck breaks down midway, uh, then what would happen? Oh, sorry, my bad. I accidentally used marketing. I think it's manufacturing analytics. My bad, sorry. And if a vehicle moves from point A to point B, and if a vehicle breaks down midway, a lot of stakeholders are negatively impacted, including the sender of the goods, the person who is receiving the goods, who is supposed to receive the goods rather, and uh, a lot of other people are negatively impacted, including your original equipment manufacturer, the truck manufacturers. Why? Because if your vehicle breaks down, someone from this OEM, say this is Volvo. So someone from Volvo has to come, has to fix the issue. If they cannot fix the issue, they will tow away your vehicle to the nearest service center. That's a cost. And if your vehicle is under insurance, you will claim insurance. And that is insurance cost. So what we have done is, we have placed IoT sensors, which is called as TCU or ECU, Electronics Controlling Unit. And then we place those IoT devices by doing some programming on Python. And we have placed that on the truck. 
we connected those to OBD on board diagnostics. And what then happens is data of critical components of your truck gets captured and it will get transmitted over the telecom provider network and it will go and reside on cloud and we used Amazon Web Services. Back then when we have implemented uh, this solution, machine learning on cloud was not very famous. Right now it's very famous, but back then it wasn't really very famous. So what we have done is we have placed uh, or we have taken the data from the cloud and then we have done descriptive analytics and predictive analytics on top of that. Descriptive analytics means, did you transport the vehicle at a stretch? Did you travel at a stretch for 600, 700 kilometers without taking a haul? If you did not take a haul, then your truck might break down because of overheating of engine maybe, or maybe your driver might be over exhausted. So your vehicle might meet with an accident. All those kind of things can be arrested by doing simple descriptive analytics. And then we have also done predictive analytics. Predictive analytics means, uh, I mean, in fact, here we have done three things. One is in a specific journey, will a vehicle break down or not? Yeah, that's one thing. If a vehicle is going to break down, after how many kilometers will it break down? That was the second thing. And the third thing is, which component will break down exactly? If we can do such predict predictions, then you're going to help save, you know, a lot of money for the various stakeholders. This was one of its kind solution because it is combination of almost all the emerging technologies or majority of the pillars of Industry 4.0 got involved here, wherein we use IoT, industrial IoT sensors, we have used cloud, and then we have used data science or machine learning or AI, whatever you want to call that. Okay. Uh, oh, one small request, uh, I mean, our moderator, can you just go on mute, please? Can you please go on mute? There's some background noise that I'm hearing. That's the reason, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. So solutions that we have built. I can give you yet another Coca-Cola. I can do is I can probably do one thing. I'm going to open a new slide. Yeah. And then let me draw here because that that will make my life easier and your understanding better we have done a project or rather we are doing a project on industry Uh, are you able to hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, so far uh, what you have talked was uh, not audible. Because if I switch off my uh, audio, you are not clear, uh, you are not audible clearly. So now are you, oh, do you get any noise? Uh, do, do you get any noise now? Uh, no. Uh, I, I, I will maintain with this. Okay. Yeah, uh, sure. So please go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. Sir. Sure, sure. Okay, fine. So we have machine beverages. What organizing manufacturing plants will do is they will try to make up for the loss that they incurred during the lockdown. So 
they will increase the manufacturing capacity. They will run the machines throughout 24 bar 7 to make up for the loss they incurred in the previous months. In the due course, if you abuse or if you overuse your machines, your machines might break down. If your machines break down, it's again a cost, right? Because your manufacturing halts, your supply chain halts. Hence, what we have done is we have placed a lot of industrial IoT sensors. We placed vibration sensors. You know, people say that your machines speak a lot. Uh, there's again background noise uh, moderator. If you mute yourself, I think there won't be any issue. Um, you'll still be able to hear, but you'll have to mute yourself. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is, it is muted. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So, that means your machines might break down. We also have placed sound sensors. If there's a lot of sound, right, then because of that sound also, your that, that's an indication that your machine might break down. We have placed Will blow air. Okay, and then if a lot of air is blown, it becomes 1.5 liter PET bottle. And if less air is blown, it becomes a 500 ml PET bottle. It depends on how much air you blow in. It de uh, determines on what kind of bottles will come out of this blower machine. And here, the pressure sensor, the pressure with which you blow, is also very important. That's called as pressure sensor and then after this you fill syrup into that syrup in the sense the coke that you consume that syrup and when you pour syrup syrup should be of a specific temperature so syrup is maintained in cold environment using chillers so you need a chiller sensor also and then when you fill say this is your bottle and you're filling uh, syrup into that. You cannot fill it can overflow. And also, since these are aerated drinks, you need to leave some space. So that's rejected if it's filled until the brim. If you underfill that, still these bottles are kicked out. I mean, reject it. For that, we need something called as filler sensor. And then in that way, there is thicker sensor, there is lid sensor. There are a lot of sensors. Right? When you use all of these sensors, these are nothing but industrial IoT sensors. After using all of these sensors, what you do is you generate data. So you have machines. You have carefully understood the critical components and place your industrial IoT sensors which will then do what? They will generate data. Once you get the data, you have to collect the data, right? So we started placing the data on multiple systems, right? I mean, I'll give you an example on how you can place the data. One is if you have SCADA system, which is like your industrial PC, industrial computer. Okay, you can place the data on industrial PC or computer. That's one thing. Second thing is, second thing is, you can also place your data on your own servers. These servers could be on-premise. On-premise means you'll have your data center on your, uh, in, in your location itself, in your office, in your premise. Or it could be under your control or you can place the data on cloud. 
for cloud, AWS is the best because it has 50% market share. And the way AWS is enhancing is mind boggling. Of course, Google comes next and then Azure. Once you have the data here, what do you do with that data? You do a lot of stuff and you build AI application. How can you build AI application? You can build AI application using data science concepts. Data science means statistical analysis, regression analysis, forecasting, a bunch of those. And within data science, you have something called as data mining. Within data mining, within data science, you have something called as data mining. Within data mining, you have something called as machine learning. Within machine learning, there is something called as deep learning, right? And deep learning means neural networks. So whatever you use, ultimately you... So say you built a model which predicts on when will a component break down. So you use predictive analytics. Technicians. What will these technicians do then? These technicians will take this information and go and try to fix the issues in the machine. They do proactive job, not reactive. Reactive means if a machine breaks down, you'll go and try to fix the issue. Proactive means <coughs> even before a machine breaks down, you will take an action. Actions that are being built now in the world that we live in. At the same time, how do you transport the data from IoT sensors to the SCADA system to your you know, tools such as maybe you're using Python or you might be using R or you might be using Spark to build your machine learning algorithms, whatever you use. Cyber secure. So all these things are part of your industry 4.0 implementation. Okay, and then if you want to read more about that, you're always welcome to visit our uh, website. And then here in, under manufacturing, you find those examples or use cases in the space of manufacturing analytics. I'll speak about a few more, but then we also have a product called as wind turbine breakdown prediction model. Uh, just watch this and then I'll explain about this also.
Okay, so this is another example, a classic, very classic example of how we have countered this. So what we have done is we have placed IoT sensors on the wind turbine. And then we started generating the data and we collected the data and placed that on cloud. Okay, let me go to this and then briefly explain here. That would probably make more sense. Okay. So what we have done is we have wind turbines from and a wind turbine has a lot of then we have placed that and we built machine learning algorithm on that. There is a lot of background noise here, moderator. You'll have to mute yourself, please. Uh, sorry, moderator. <clears throat> there is a lot of background noise. Let me take a poll here. On do you all also experience this? Do you hear? background noise so no can you please reply to this do you hear some background noise then? or is it all okay no oh yes 92 percent of people are saying there is some background noise ah uh, okay whom do i request can someone please uh, mute yourself? There is background noise. Hello, there is a lot of background noise. Hello. Hello, there is a lot of background noise. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll just proceed further. Uh, I think we have to live with that background noise. So I'll proceed further. So from the wind turbine, on the wind turbine, rather, we have placed industrial IoT uh, sensors. We captured the data and placed it on cloud. Using that data, we built machine learning algorithms. And the moment there is some prediction that a component might fail, this information was then sent to service management tool. Okay. And we have used ServiceNow as a service management tool. And then this service management tool, the moment it observes any alert, it will send those alerts as SMS to the technicians on ground. And what these technicians will do, they are going to go and fix the issue faster. If they feel that it is a false alarm, meaning sometimes what happens is, uh, your alert might say, hey, there is 90% probability that a component might fail. But then, when technician goes and reviews it, they might feel that, you know what, everything is good. That means it's a false alarm. Okay, it's really a false alarm. Sometimes, the technicians, when they go and check, they might feel that, yeah, really a component was about to fail. So that's a true alarm. So you take an action and fix the issue. In I, you need to send back your feedback. Okay, your feedback should be your machine learning algorithm so that
if there is a false alarm your machine learning once again if there is a true alarm your machine learning once again learn and this process is going to continue on and on you will not stop it it will continue on and on right this is yet another classic implementation of industry 4.0 implementation we have also done a lot of such projects and one another project that we have done was for uh philips let me go here let me click on this and we have done a project for blade manufacturing plant this was for philips what we have done is we have once again placed you know uh sensors on machine to capture how many blades are defect how many blades are not defect yet another project that we have done was in the space of inspecting the defective circuits so what we have done here let me go here and explain there is a specific manufacturing plant in uh, malaysia which is specialized in semiconductor the manufacture semiconductor and what happens is you'll have assembly lines on which you'll have circuits circuits which are and usually what happens is since these are high end uh, circuits people will stand here in the assembly line as soon as circuit comes to them they inspect it manually and then determine whether the circuit is defective or not manual inspection is pretty cheap so what we have done is we have placed a high end cam camera on this so this is an industrial iot visual sensor camera and what we have done is we started capturing the image images of each and every circuit that was manufactured got captured and then we have done some kind of image process okay we have done some kind of image processing and as part of that image processing using computer vision and deep learning algorithm convolution neural network we classify on whether this image is defective or not and defective circuits would go here non defectives will go here but then we have placed another third assembly line also if the probability of the prediction says that there is more than 70% probability that a circuit is defective then it will go in the street meaning this is defective if there is about 20% probability circuit is defective then a problem then it will go this way or not defective and this route will still have manual inspection if probability lies anywhere in between 20% to 70% then it will fall in this and still you follow manual inspection in that way if not 100% automation we could at least achieve a significant proportion of automation right so this is how you solve industry Four point or solutions, or problems rather, and implementing industry four point or solutions is not a one-time task. It takes years together. And for Coca-Cola, the project that we are doing, it is a multi-year project, which will go on for three years. So it takes approximately three years for us to meet uh, the kind of maturity that we expect. right so beat automotive beat aviation beat life sciences healthcare or manufacturing or telecom be whatever you uh, name we can implement industry 4.0 there and in manufacturing plants it is heavily used i can give you one more example in the space of telecom right uh, you will have then
you have telecom tower and then is any of the components faulty for that we need not have people climb up and then periodically do the inspection what we can do is we can fly drones you have drones you fly the drone and then you capture the video of the towers and then do image processing on top of that you apply computer vision deep learning kind of algorithms to determine which of the components right so these are the kind of solutions that we have built in the space of telecom also and the list would go on and on but in the interest of time i would just stop here and then let me take questions if you have any so feel free to ask questions friends ah uh, not exactly priyadarshini not because of white boot see i'm not using any white boot still you'll hear that sound it's not because of white boot it's a powerpoint presentation that has nothing to do with the background noise yet yeah. uh please ask questions if you have any i'll be more than happy to address those and if you want to uh, you know ask a questions then i'm always feel free to connect with me and thing is that is how a lot of jobs are being offered to the students and since we all teach students if we also have one then it's going to set the context right so there we go sir have you completed um, the presentation sir yeah yeah yes i have completed yes sir thank you sir thank you well, first of all thank you so much for your wonderful time and uh, so practically your experience uh, so you have experienced a practical manner how the uh, data and takes an iot and how these things are uh, uh, being uh, useful and uh, so this very i think uh, this, this will be a great eye opener for the uh, students and faculty this is just those who want to develop themselves uh, in the data analytics and iot and it was quite interesting sir for me also i sure, am to, to learn uh, data analytics and iot so it is very highly useful and thank you so much for your wonderful presentation so let me uh, uh, look into the chat box is there any question has been uh, posted and uh, uh dr priyadarshi had asked one question sir in covid uh, scenario what is the prospect of um, manufacturing analytics yeah in the time of covid 19 i think manufacturing analytics is even more preferred because people will be you know increasing the amount of load that they usually put on their machines to a significant extent they'll try to manufacture more they'll try to sell for a lower cost that's called as economies of scale so while uh, in the due course of achieving economies of scale they might start abusing the machines and machines tend to break down that's one reason why you need analytics for sure you need sensors to generate data you need your cloud environment or databases to store the data and then you need to do predictive analytics on top of that okay while this is one part of the story another part of the story is because of covid 19 organizations have become thin in terms of the amount that they have in terms of the money that they have so they have to save a lot of money and one instant way of saving money is through automation and in order to do automation you once again need analytics right hence people are you know scaling up uh, and taking the route of digital transformation okay sir thank you thank you sir uh one other question sir uh, um sir arivala can ask the question what are the possibilities of adopting industry 4.0 in micro and small scale industries yeah in micro and uh, small scale industries 
organizations might not have sufficient money to implement end to end industry 4.0 but what they usually do is they choose relevant areas so we have say nine pillars in um, industry 4.0 you have industrial iot sensors you have cyber security you have robotic automation and you have uh, a lot of other things such as artificial intelligence big data so on and so forth additive manufacturing and all that we need not implement all of those pillars we can hand pick those pillars which are very relevant and which can quickly solve the low hanging fruits so the organization see quick benefits right for example automatic attendance tracking if people have covid 19 you can immediately track on who have covid 19 or who has high fever because they are the people who are uh, more receptive to covid 19 so you will arrest the spread of covid 19 in that way so yep those are a few possibilities okay okay sir thank you and let me sahana ask one question sir can you uh, recommend the trending project of iot used in agro technology when you say agro technology i am sensing that you are speaking about agriculture okay so there is a project which we have done for uh, rajendra nagar agriculture university here in hyderabad so what we have done is we have flown drones on top of the crop to capture the information on where can you have weeds or insects we used multi spectral cameras which captures infrared and ultraviolet rays which are invisible spectrum that would reflect a different color altogether right and then you know that in the entire crop there are weeds or insects which started at a specific location so your farmer can go and sprinkle the pesticide only on that portion and not sprinkle pesticide on the healthy plants thereby helping you arrest the spread of weeds or insects alongside increase and also reducing uh residual f- fertilizer residuals because if you sprinkle throughout the fertilizer which goes into the soil and in the next crop your yield will get arrested right so these are a few examples thank you thank you sir thank you and uh, uh sir thank you so much uh, sir is it possible to switch on your video for a moment uh because at least we could actually uh Yeah, there is a slight challenge with my camera, hence I wasn't doing that. Oh, let us uh, try one, so because uh, yeah. at last either. <laughs> yeah, I clicked on that, but nothing yeah. is happening. Okay, okay, sir. No, no issue, sir. No issue, sir. Uh, okay, yeah, sir. Yeah. Sir, thank you so much. Thank you so much for a wonderful timing, and we hope we made a nice presentation. We hope uh, this will be uh, helpful for the researchers, even because uh, data analytics, IoT, and data science are. Going to uh, uh, and also they are leading the uh, world nowadays and uh, uh, so uh, so wonderful presentation and uh, uh, we we are uh, uh, waiting to waiting to hear many things from you and we will meet in some other occasions sir thank you sir thank you so much sure sure thank you thank you so much for this opportunity thank you all friends bye yes, uh, dear participants thank you so much for uh, Your wonderful participation, and this is a very excellent topic. And as I said, uh, data analytics, IoT, artificial intelligence, which are going to lead the world, lead the world, and uh, and they are doing now also. And in future, everything will be in the in the, in, the, in their hand. And uh, so, as Chennai Shah Technology is always uh, used to go along with this society. so in part of that uh, i uh, this uh, new course has been introduced in the uh, research technology the course is uh, uh, ai in data on data science ai in data science so as uh, these technologies are going to lead the world uh, chennai for technology has introduced this course ai in data science from this academic campus uh, those who want to go ahead also you can uh, visit our website or you can approach our and as you know this challenge of technology is conducting more webinars so so far we have conducted more than 190 webinars 
uh, during this lockdown period to enhance the uh, knowledge of faculty and students community. So purely this is done uh, as a social responsibility. And please keep on visiting uh, our ancient websites, uh, chennaiinshotechnology.com or chennaiinshotechnology.com slash webinar, or you can uh, visit Chennaiinshot Technology in Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram to know more about the fourth webinars. And the reason for saying the knowledge four point webinar as a distinct is the way in which the experts are being called. The people, those who are in, in uh, those who are excellent in their field, and those who are uh, doing better, better in this field are only called to share their uh, uh, ex expertise in this wonderful forum. Hence, this is uh, being a distinct uh, knowledge sharing webinar among others. So, thank you so much for being with us. So, all the certificates will be uh, reached to your inbox within tonight. So the only one thing is, uh, please fill your data correctly, email IDs and name. So now I have seen your name. So we hope uh, mentioned this, seen you as a Rao, 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 Rao. So, you, so the certificate will also fill to be like that. So okay, the data, uh, uh, what you are uh, feeding will be used for uh, uh, providing the certificates, okay? So please fill your name correctly and your email ID also. So uh, your certificates will be reached within two nights. Okay, and so a lot of so for the uh, circuit branches people, so one uh, one week FTP is going on, and uh, research trends in uh, IoT, data science, and AI, which is being organized by uh, Computer Science Engineering Department. So already two days over. However, those who are in thirst of knowledge, you can approach. You can. Uh, join the uh, FTP, even though it is FTP, so that will be very useful for those who want to learn and those who want to enhance their knowledge. So that will be a great platform. So a lot of uh, professors from IITs and NITs and industrial uh, people have been called to share their uh, lectures. Those who, who are in wish to enhance your knowledge, you can still register for the FTP to learn okay and it is further uh, planned to uh, enhance knowledge of mechanical and mechanics uh, uh, faculties and students it is planned to uh, conduct one lecture series for 10 hours uh, daily one hour per day uh, one hour per day total 10 hours the lecture series on excellent topic mechanical behavior of materials so it is one of the essential topic for mechanical, civil, and mechatronics. Those uh, who want to get the things also, you can visit our website in forthcoming days for the registration. And uh, to uh, enhance the knowledge of mechatronics and electronics and Tripoli and even CEC's peoples, uh, faculty, students, and registers. One week faculty level program is going to be announced by Department of Mechanics Engineering Mechanics soon. So on the various elements of mechatronics and the sensor, actuators, and IoT and smart manufacturing are going to be discussed in the wonderful one week faculty level program, uh, which will be most probably uh, to be from six to ten in the coming month. So you can get the information in your uh, social media and websites mm -hmm. for communities. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, no feedback form will be sent. Your certificate will be sent along with the feedback form. So uh, please uh, connect with us. Thank you so much. Thank you.